Hey, what's going on? It's Jerry Glean back on the scene here with another video. Today, I'm going to be showing you all how to use two compressors on one vocal. So let's hop right in and get to it. All right, so I have my vocal pulled up here with just one compressor plug in loaded on it. And let's go ahead and press play. And you're going to see that I'm getting around 8 to 12 decibels of gain reduction. Staring down the hourglass as this day passes by. This whole world is moving fast. So baby, let's take our time. Cool. So a lot of people would be satisfied with just using one compressor and they'd call it a day. But what if instead we use two separate compressors, one after another to split that same amount of gain reduction that we were getting here with just one compressor what if we split that up between two compressors so that way they don't have to work as hard so let me show y'all what i'm talking about i went ahead and removed that original compressor that we had loaded on the vocal and i've replaced it with these two compressors so you don't need to use these exact compressors but these two plugins that i'm going to use are a combo that has been used by so many people in the past on countless records and it's just going to deliver a classic sounding type of compression this first compressor the cla 76 is an emulation of an 1176 type compressor and these type of compressors are known for an aggressive and fast sounding type of compression so we're going to use it to control the louder peaks in our vocal so we'll go ahead and set the ratio at four to one and you'll see right here in the middle of the compressor the ratio setting you can pick between four to one 8 to 1, 12 to 1, 20 to 1, or you can set it to all and it turns this compressor into a limiter. So just make sure that you have the ratio set at 4 to 1. And this compressor is set up a bit different than most other compressors. So over here on the left side, you'll see that there's an input knob and this is going to kind of act like a threshold setting that you'll see on most other compressors. So all you have to do is increase the input knob until you start to see some type of gain reduction over here on this meter. And you can set this meter over here to see how much gain reduction you're getting by making sure that the gain reduction is selected over here on the right side. So you can turn this meter into a input meter, an output meter, um, or gain reduction. So just make sure that you had the gain reduction selected over here on the right side. So next you have the output knob right here, and this is just going to control the volume of the vocal as it leaves the compressor after compression has taken place. So as you increase this output knob to the right, your vocal is going to get more loud. And if you go left with the knob, it's going to make the vocal more quieter. Okay, so next we have the attack and release settings here in the middle of the compressor. And what's funny about these knobs is that the more right you go with the attack knob and the more right you go with the release knob, the faster the attack and release settings get. And then the more left you go with the knob, the slower that the attack and release settings get. So it's kind of opposite from what you would think. And then down here, there is an analog feature that if you leave it on, then it'll introduce some really quiet static noise to your signal. And it's just trying to replicate that electrical circuit um, sound from the original hardware version of this compressor. So I always just make sure to have that turned off. And then you also have two different colors or styles of this compressor that have their own unique sound to them. Um, that you can choose from. You got the blacky right here, and then you have the bluey. And for this tutorial, we're just gonna go ahead and use the bluey version of this compressor. So let's play the vocal, and we're gonna adjust the input knob over here on the left until we start to get about three to six decibels of gain reduction on the meter. And remember, we're using a whole other compressor after this one, so we really only want to compress the peaks of our vocal with this compressor. Okay, so next we're going to set the attack setting and we want somewhat of a fast attack because on this compressor we're using it to control the peaks so we instantly want to clamp down on the peaks as they come into this compressor. Staring down the hourglass as this day passes by this whole world is moving fast so baby let's take our time the rain is falling as all right, next we're gonna set the release knob and we want a fast to medium release on this compressor because again, we just wanna compress the peaks of our vocal quickly and then let go of the vocal. Staring down the hourglass as this day passes by This whole world is moving fast So baby, let's take our time The rain is falling all right, so the last thing that you want to do 
is just to make sure that you control the amount of gain that's being fed from this compressor into the next compressor. And you're gonna use the output knob right here to control that volume of the vocal. So I'm actually feeling like we're at a pretty good, um, you know, loudness level with our vocals. So I'm not gonna adjust this output knob, but if you feel like you're too loud leaving this compressor, just go ahead and turn it down a bit using this knob right here. All right, so next I've loaded the CLA 2A compressor on our vocal. This is the second compressor in our vocal chain. And so the output of the first compressor is just gonna feed our second compressor. And this compressor is an emulation of a classic LA 2A style compressor. And it's known for a really smooth sounding type of compression. And you'll notice that it has no attack and release knobs. So those are fixed settings within the compressor that can't be manually adjusted, but they're kind of on the slower side as far as attack and release settings go with compressors. So this will be good for our second compressor because we're not using this compressor to control peaks like we did with the first compressor. We like that slower attack time on this compressor because it allows that transient or that peak in our vocal to pass through the compressor untouched. We're just using this compressor to gently touch the vocal and help bring out the clarity of each word. All right, so we have a few knobs to work with here. The first knob is the peak reduction, and this is just gonna control how much compression you're getting. And then over here on the left is the gain knob, and this controls the volume output of the vocal leaving the compressor. So this is what you're gonna use to control the final volume of the vocal. And then over here on the bottom of the compressor is the emphasis knob, which allows you to control what frequencies in the vocal will trigger this compressor. So the further you get away from the flat setting, um, the less sensitive the compressor will be to lower frequencies like those bass frequencies. But I want all of my frequencies to trigger this compressor. So I always make sure that this is turned to flat. Over here, you just wanna make sure that the meter is set to gain reduction. And let's play the vocal and I'm gonna just aim for somewhere between two to four decibels of peak reduction right here on this meter. Staring down the hourglass as this day passes by this world is moving Let's take our time The rain is falling as the clouds make their way through Okay, and the last thing that we need to do is just adjust the gain knob right here to get a good volume level for the vocal as it leaves the compressor. Staring down the hourglass as this day passes by This old world is moving fast so Baby, let's take our time. The rain is falling as the clouds make their way through. Champagne colors dawning as. All right, so the vocal is sounding pretty good right there. And that's how you use two compressors to achieve a really smooth and professional sounding vocal using compression. The first compressor was just there to kind of catch all of the sudden peaks and volume in our vocal and we used a faster attack and a faster release setting, and then we used the second compressor with a slower attack time to really just glue the vocal together and smooth everything out. All right, so that's it for today. I hope y'all learned something. If you're still confused about anything, just leave a comment, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can, and I'll see y'all in the next video.